Hello, what's up everyone? It's your boy Connor. Welcome to Slinging Sips. I want to start off with a few announcements before I announce the coffee that I'll be enjoying today. My grinder likes to spin on its own. I had that set up to look a little better than that. But first off, I want to break the ice by mentioning I no longer work for Jacob Alejandro. I now work for Alias Coffee. And now the reason for my departure from there was due to some differences in some brand clashing. I think that had something to do with American Coffee Trip, as well as I, um, I was certainly changing the atmosphere at that coffee shop. Whereas I'm used to kind of being a solo act, creating my own atmosphere, creating my own vibe. They're very strict and formal about the way they do things, and I just don't fit that mold. That's okay. Alias is a little bit more free-flowing. It'll allow my personality to certainly be exuded and come out a lot more, so I'll be with them next Monday. That is not to say that Jacob Alejandro still doesn't kick ass. Their coffee selection practices are amazing, and I've learned so much through them, a lot of which I carry into this video. The pour over technique that I use is Alejandro's competition method, and I will continue to use it because I love using it. Very similar to the James Hoffman method that I've been using before. Also to mention today, I got some soap from the coffee shop, Jacob Alejandro Soap. They're using the Brazil, I think it's from Passenger? They don't say where it's from. But I'm going to be shellacking this shit on my body pretty damn soon. It looks phenomenal. Coffee soap? I'm obsessed with coffee, so of course I want to be doing that. Today I'll be reviewing a single origin Columbia from Nomad Coffee Roasters. It's saying, tasting notes of raspberry, toffee, and green melon. I'm just going to bring the bag right up to the camera so you all you viewers can take a gander at that. It looks like it's backwards on camera. Haha, <laughs> not changing that. Anyways, let's get a pour over started. I'm going to start by dumping my water. I'm going to plug in the dang thing. set to 93 degrees Celsius. While I have my water boiling, I'm gonna get my filter, handy dandy pour over filter here. What I've started to find with making these pour overs is I like to, I like to add a little crease right at this little bit. And since this is my coffee, I can stick my fingers inside this. I'm just gonna run my finger gently along this crease here. Plus, even if I was serving another customer as well, the water heating up the paper filter and the brewer bring method itself would nullify anything I did to it. Plus, my hands are very clean. So the water's brewing right now. I got my grinder here. It is set to 2.6. Now, this is the Kinu M47 Simplicity. It's not the higher trim ones, so you're going to see adjustments of 10 microns between settings instead of the higher trim ones, which is like one micron. Those are like $500 manual hamper grinders. This is like 200 bucks. This is already very, very precise. I may eventually get the higher end one, despite that. Wow, so that smell doesn't come through nearly as strong as the coffee from Dak Coffee Roasters did. It's... Those are some fresh beans. I don't smell much of anything, to be perfectly honest. Of 
before I proceed any further too, one other thing I wanted to mention was I will no longer be scoring the coffees that I review. I am starting to think that the purpose of slinging sips, and this is being developed as I make these videos, so forgive me, I'm thinking on the fly. That's what I've done with this channel from the beginning. You either choose to watch my videos or you choose not to. And um, that's okay. It's okay if you don't like my stuff. I'm taking the time though to try to enjoy it, to try to taste every coffee because I want to actually try and attempt to enter Coffee Masters next year. So training starts now, I guess. Tasting, sipping, enjoying coffees. I'll be getting a cupping set as well, guys, so should be enjoying that or using that. Give or take two or three weeks from now. So with no score in this video, so the purpose of singing sips will be more to enjoy the coffee. I will be starting out baseline with a pour over. I'm going to be getting other pieces of equipment. What you see back here is not all I have. I also have an arrow press. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have this be the main body of the video where I make a pour over for all of you guys. And then there'll be other clips of the video in which I'm maybe I'm making a French press. Maybe I'm working with my Chechva Turkish pot or maybe I'm working with my arrow press. And there's going to be different recipes, outputs, in, you know, brew times methods behind that as I do it. So let's start here. This is at the same grind setting as the single origin Columbia from Daft Coffee Roasters is. That was perfectly dialed in. You got a dry bed right around two minutes and 50 seconds. Oh, bean jumped out there. I actually found that I opted for, uh, let's see, I'm gonna grind that up. I clean these floors very often and if beans jump out, you can still use them, especially with the heat. Let's heat my brewer. I take my time with this part. I think it's very important that every single part of the paper is hot and wet. Gets out as much as that paper taste as possible from the coffee and the greater the weight of the paper, so if you're looking at something like a Chemex, it's gonna play much more of a factor. So that's around four and a half grams. These probably only weigh like one gram, something like that. I haven't weighed them out, but that is something to consider whenever you're using any sort of percolation brewing method for coffee. AeroPress, don't even think about it, those little micro filters. That's why generally when you're working with like an immersion brewer, like something like the French press is something that I almost prefer to brew on. I like doing this because of the experience, uh, the experience of it, doing the pours, just getting stuff dialed in is really entertaining and fun. And I think it really brings a greater connection between you and the coffee that you're making. But French press, gives you some tasting notes that you're going to be able to experience a lot better. Just it retains some of those oils that are filtered out by paper if you're dripping coffee through that. Let's pour my coffee in. I've got my, um, my God, you can tell guys, this is one take. I have my scale zeroed out here. So what I'm doing is I weighed out my coffee and I'm trying to see what changes I get through the grinder, how much coffee weight do I lose? I 
I was at 18.3 grams. Now I'm down to 18. I'm going to take that bed of coffee. I'm going to tap it flat. Continue out on the subject of how slinging sips will continue to be set up from here is there will be this part of the video where I'm making my first brew, first opening of the bag of coffee. Afterwards, there will be a clip of a dialed in cup from the pour over. And then afterwards from there, I'll be trying other brewing methods. So the pour over is going to re remain the single pillar of slinging sips, the baseline drink that I do for all the new coffees that I'm trying. And I'm certainly getting better with my pour over technique. That's something to keep in mind as well. And I'll be getting better and better with all my other brewing methods as well. Being adaptable, being able to change between the brewing methods and get different beautiful tasting notes from each brewing method. And so I'm trying to basically, through this series, not only take you guys on just like a little tour of my kitchen, enjoying coffee, trying out new stuff, but this is also a way for me to practice and to better prepare my palate for the sake of single sip, for the sake of coffee masters, which who knows, I might not even get in. I just want to try it. It just seems fun. Coming up to our final output. I just went a little bit over than I wanted to, right around 306 grams. I've still got my corded mic here, which I think I'm just going to continue to use that for all my recordings here. I actually like the audio on this mic way better than the Bluetooth mic, the Bluetooth mics I've been using. They got like, you get like this little Bluetooth part that like clips here. That's great. I got a bunch of those that still work. What doesn't work are those little USB widgets. My phone has like a case that's like made like a tank. And hold on, I need something to catch this. There's actually drinking chocolate in that container. So I'm gonna use this. Looks like it is. A little bit slow. That's okay. This is very much okay. It's marked at two minutes and 45 seconds. The uh, Dak Coffee Roasters coffee that I tried last time, I know I'm bouncing around all over the place. My brain just bounces around all over the place. I'm talking about the last coffee that I had, the Dak Ro Coffee Roasters coffee, single origin Colombia. Almost tasted like strawberry jam. It was delicious. I found that heavy extraction did not favor that coffee at all. That coffee preferred to be a little bit on the lighter side. So I started to find that as I went through the bag, I actually ended up dialing back my time by like a good five or ten seconds and that less extraction was more favored in that brewing method it really the strawberry tasting notes came out very powerfully when i did it on turkish coffee as well which is really cool i don't know if i mentioned that in my last video i 
It's very subtle. It's like the skin of a watermelon. No score here. Disregard the score from the last video. Although I'll be releasing it all the same. It's all one take. Your host, Connor. You're gonna see me succeed. You're gonna see me fail. You're gonna watch it. Or you're not. You're gonna take something from it. Or you're not. That's okay. But the best part, of course, giving this a little single sip and then telling you what I think of it. Not scoring it, but telling you what I think. This is um this is certainly more of a tea like coffee drinking experience. So the watermelon is definitely the the most prominent tasting note that comes out, but nothing comes out really strong. It could definitely be interpreted in a lot of other ways. Anything that may be considered harsh on your tongue is immediately taken over by a subtle smoothness that rolls throughout your mouth. There's going to be nothing harsh, bitter, or like acidic about this coffee. There's a very tiny amount of citrus, but it's not going to hit your palate the way something that really has a prominent tasting note of like orange peel or lemon or lime is really going to give you that bodied, full, open mouth experience. This doesn't do that. It's a very subtle, easy, balanced coffee that I think I don't have as much interest in it as I did with the Dak Coffee Roasters coffee, but it's very easy to enjoy, and I have a feeling it's gonna be very easy to dial into other brewing methods as well. With the pour over, what I'll probably wanna do is actually dial it, because it was pulling a little bit slow, I'm gonna dial my grinder a little bit coarser to make up for that, and then hopefully the times will start to line up and I should get more of a dialed in pour that I'll record for you guys. It starts with watermelon, and then I get a little bit of a citrus, a citrus taste in there. To me, it's almost like mango, really, because I get a little bit of like a citrus kick to the mango, and then I get the sweetness is the thing that just carries the tasting notes all the way to the end to where it like just fizzles out of your mouth completely. It's really cool. I actually have this coffee prepared for video editing. My office space is right around the corner. Just getting work done. This is really good. I'm certainly so much, so excited to try more coffees in the future. I just bought another, Troy. I just bought another bag today. I'm not gonna share that with you guys, but Jacob Alejandro, at least, they go through a rotating selection of coffees. So there is always a lot to try, a lot of new interesting things that I'll be able to present to you guys. And it's a, it's a two minute walk. I'll also be presenting some coffees from Alias Coffee Roasters relatively soon. And then I actually have to figure out a time to go over to Touchy Coffee. 
There's a lot of good coffee names in this city. Excuse me. And while there's a couple more coffee shops I'd like to review in this city, some so those upcoming single sip adventures, two scheduled single sip adventures, I'm gonna have to get my legs back in shape because I will be cycling out to these coffee shops. I need some night gear. It's gonna be intense. I've got a 102 mile loop planned and a 162 mile loop planned. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. Uh, for the 162 mile loop, I might try to plan a just crash. Maybe pull an all nighter to hit the last coffee shop if I can't do it in a day. I've never biked that far in a day. I've only done 145 miles, so I'm close to that number, but I need to work my way back up to being able to pull sentries like I used to. Like I probably still can, honestly, because of the hiking. But there's a lot of exciting stuff coming to American Coffee Trip. I'm still in optimization hell. That train is continuing every single day. Slinging sips is changing video by video. These will get shorter as I have less updates to dump on you guys and I have this process more dialed in, kind of like I do with single sip. And Backcountry Barista will be kind of facing the same thing. You know, there's been a lot of more hiking uh, focus to Backcountry Barista, but I want to incorporate a coffee element. And that's just because I haven't really been able to manage the funds to get a propane tank. That's really a big part of that. Now that I don't have a car as well, the rate at which Backcountry Barista will be releasing will definitely have a change in pace in the future. But with that being said, guys, cue more footage of this coffee being enjoyed in many more different beautiful ways. With that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.